I'm happy for Lamont Roach. Uh, his first fight with PBC. Uh, here, let me mute this. It's his, it's his uh, first fight with PBC after leaving Golden Boy. His last fight was on the undercard of um, Ryan Garcia versus Javier Fortuna last July, July the 22nd, if I'm correct, right? So he's been on a substantial layoff. By the way, he did drop the Hector, Hector Garcia, oh, kind of behind the head a little bit, uh, in the uh, last round, and I do have him winning the fight. Uh, halfway through the fight, uh, a lot of swing rounds. That was more kind of like a push, kind of. Uh, but a lot of swing rounds uh, in the middle of the fight, but uh, the cleaner, more effective, aggressive puncher, or as you want to say, like ring general, was uh, Lamont Roach. Uh, he's a junior, right? Yeah, Lamont Roach Jr. Uh, 28 years old. Seems like he's been around forever. He kind of has. So former Golden Boy fighter, first fight with PBC. He should now be the WBA champion at 130 pounds. Now, the we were hearing for several years. Look at my man. Uh, speaking of the devil. Uh, Golden Boy was tagged. Uh, Roberto Diaz. Wait, let's look at the punch stats. Let's see here. One one eighteen to four hundred nine for Lamont Roach. Ninety three of four sixty eight for Hector Garcia. Lamont Roach thirty nine jabs, seventy nine power punches. Garcia thirty one jabs, sixty two power punches. Uh, but I think that like, Lamont Roach is the clear winner in a uh, close fight up until about like round. 10 9 10 or so but anyway get back to what i was saying uh golden boy was tagged with not being good to their black black fighters or uh promoting them like they would promote their uh hispanic fighters and one of the fighters that they were talking about was lamont roach now remember lamont roach did get a title shot against jamel herring several years ago on a top rank card let's listen in they're about to read the cards Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. and teach your controversy with 5v360. I guess you can say tonight. Oh, it's a split decision. Oh, shit. Jim Cheatham's worth about 114 to 113 in favor of Lamont Roach. Judge of ringside, Max DeLuca, sees at 114 to 113 in favor of Hector Luis Garcia. And Judge at ringside, Robert Hoyle, sees it. 116 to 111 in favor of the winner by split decision and the new WBA Super Featherweight Champion of the World. Happy for him. So anyway, let's talk a little bit before we listen to his post-fight interview. Yo, he's gotten better. Uh, uh, and look, put it this way: he's putting he's putting more on his punches. He's sitting down on the more. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, a much he looked a sharper in there i do admit and hector garcia is no slouch he's a tough uh, tough fighter now lamont roots is 23 one and one i forgot about that draw he lost to i forgot what card that was but he lost to uh uh what was a draw against um uh boxing's first openly gay fighter orlando cruz miguel Cotto fighter you know uh what card was this i covered this fight damn i've been doing this shit for years man no, did I cover this fight? No, I was in a coma. <laughs> Wild. Wild. Uh, that was on, that was the main event, wasn't it? Let's listen into the uh, post-fight interview. But where does Lamont Roots stack up at 130 pounds? We're going to look at it. Damn, he going to cry. Damn, he going to cry. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. You put on a good fight. I just think he had the wrong game plan. Again, but after personally sitting out 16 months to protect this mandatory position, how does it feel to be a world champion? Man, it feels great. It's been a long time coming. Y'all see why the fight ain't happened when it was supposed to. He's been ducking his work the whole time. I congratulate him. He's a great champion. But like I said, this is my shit. Now he over there crying. The output for both of you was down below your averages of punches landed and thrown. Did you feel you had done enough in the judge's eyes entering the decision? Yeah, I definitely think I've done enough. He was playing the cat and mouse game. He didn't really want to fight. I don't know if he felt like, you know, power or anything like that. But he was trying to be a uh, tricky guy. I'd give my hats off to him. He tried to use his range. But um, it wasn't enough. 
The close fight seemed to break out in your favor in round 11 when you rocked him with a left cross. How were you able to finally break him down and hurt him? Man, that was in the game plan. The game plan was to break him down. I seen that he was a quitter. He ain't quit tonight, but you, he a tough motherfucker. But, but I was on the way. I was gonna get him out of there one way or another. Well, with a close fight up in the air in round 12, boy, did you deliver some fireworks in dropping Hector Garcia. Let's take a look at the replay. Tell us what you see. Man, we've been working on the shots at all time. Keep his left hand real, I mean, his right hand real low. We was working on the hook. If you ask Brian, if you ask Brian, I will tell you the game plan was, that was to go a cupping that shot. Hook, crank that left hook, and that's what we was doing. You fought for a world title four years ago against Jamel Herring and came up short. What did you learn that you applied tonight? Uh, that you got to take it. I said it over and over again. They're not going to give me nothing. As you can see, the scorecards, was, it was a split decision, so I had to go take it. What does this performance say about where you stand at 130 pounds in the world of boxing? I think I'm the best, and I want to show I'm the best. Uh, whoever want to fight, <laughs> let me know, because I want to fight all y'all. Um, it's some cool champions at 130. Uh, Oshaki just defended his belt. He just signed with top rank. Uh, Navarrete, a tough competitor. And um, Cordina, whoever, whichever one want to fight. Congratulations. Thank you. Not going to interview the, the champion. champion. There we go. Hector Luis Garcia. Hector, first and foremost, what was your opinion of the judges' scorecard? Well, eh, realmente, yo me sentí ganador. Si fue ese golpe que determinó eh, la decisión, eh, bien por ellos, por los jueces, pero al final son ellos que determinan la, la pelea. Eh, realmente fue un golpe detrás de la nuca, el cual me fui, me fui, me fui hacia adelante y el, el referee me contó. I thought I, you know, won the fight, but then again, uh, I respect the referee's decision, and if they take into account that last punch that he hit me behind the head, uh, then he, he did win. But if, either than that, you know, I think I won the fight. You vowed in coming back down to the weight class at 130 pounds where you're the champion to be more active, to throw more punches. How difficult out there was it to land and throw consistently against him? Well, mira, realmente no lo vi, no lo vi nada difícil. Y para mí las dos categorías son iguales, 130, 135. Eh, si no, sí que sí. Perdón, sí, quise defender mi título en la 130 porque realmente para mí eso era un orgullo defender mi título con ese. Yeah, but basically 130, 135 is the same for me, but I did want to come down to 130th and defend my title like I did today. This was a split decision. You feel the score went your way. What could be next for you? Bueno, sí, mira, fue una decisión dividida. Yo creo que fue el, el conteo que determinó el combate. Para mí, eh, esto, es una, esto es un deporte que se pierde y se gana. Lo que hay que seguir adelante con fe y positivo, trabajando duro para lo siguiente, para lo que, para lo que se aproxima, para lo próximo. This is a sport that you win or lose. I mean, the split decision that you said, basically, I think that last round was the difference, but, you know, we win, lose, we're going to come back strong. Thank you so much, Hector. Back to Moro Ronaldo at ringside. All right, BC, thank you very much. When Lamont Roach Jr. started boxing, he was nine years old. The first day he went into the gym, he went in with his cousin, Jermaine Roach. January 2017, 25-year-old Jermaine was... I wonder, I wonder what the lineage is of, like, you know how, like, uh, like people who name, uh, last name is Smith, it's because like they were a blacksmith. Their family was a, was a blacksmith like hundreds of years ago. I wonder like where you get like the, the last name Roach from. No disrespect. Uh, let's stay on topic. But uh, I mean, you know, here was the cards, by the way. Uh, 116, 114, 113 by Tim Cheatham. Max DeLuca, 114, 113. And Robert Hoyle, 116, 111. I have no real issues with those cards uh, because depending on what kind of fight you were looking at, you know, as I said, the first nine, 10 rounds or so, it was a lot of swing rounds in there, you know. Um, so, but at the end of the day, in my personal opinion, the right man won. Uh, Lamont Roach, now the 130 pound division, I, I remember when I was covering Joe Gordina's fight and Oshaki Foster's fight. I didn't cover Emmanuel Navarrete versus uh, Robson Consacal, but from my understanding, a lot of people say that uh, Consacal got a bad decision. Here is uh, Steve Farhood's card. He had at 117, uh, uh, 111. But 
a lot of people were saying basically that Emmanuel Navarrete lost that fight or should have lost. Let me know. I didn't watch the Secure Stevenson fight either. Thank God. Let me tell you what happened. Uh, I was over at my girl crib. Um, and the main event was about to come on, but then I got tired, fucking fell asleep on, on the couch. No, this, the co-feature, Emmanuel Navarrete fight was about to come on, and uh, I fucking fell asleep on the couch. Uh, didn't get no sex, no nothing. Uh, but anyway, Oshaki Foster is now signed with top rank, uh, WBC champion. Lamont Roach now has that WBA. You think he got a rematch clause? He's not big time enough yet to have a rematch clause, right? Uh, but um, Lamont Roach is now the WBA, just signed with PBC. Joe Cordina is over on the zone. Joe Cordina didn't look good in his last fight. We covered that. And you got Emmanuel Navarrete, who's a top ring fighter as well, who they're trying to get him in the ring possibly in the future against a secure Stevenson. So basically, the division is scattered. I don't see Lamont Roach fighting Oshaki Foster anytime soon. I don't see him fighting Joe Cordina. And I don't see him fighting Emmanuel Navarrete. So who does he fight? Huh. It's likely going to be a title defense. He just got his just got his belt. They're going to build him up. Don't be surprised if it's uh, Jose Romero or Francisco Fonseca still kicking about around there. Kenichi Ogawa, I doubt. You know, John O'Carro, I doubt. Uh, that's what I'm seeing. It's probably going to be a name. It's going to be like a filler uh, type build his name up type fight. You know, because he's still, you know, he's only 28 years old. But I don't see anything uh, uh, big for his next fight. Like, I'm not even entertaining him versus Oshaki Foster, Joe Cordina, or Emmanuel Navarrete next. I've been covering boxing too long. You know, like, I just don't see it. Like, I'm not even, you know, I haven't wasted enough breath on it. With that being said, overall, uh, let me tell you, I've been enjoying this pay-per-view so far. So this is my, I guess you want to say it's like my season premiere you know, uh, I started with the Katie Taylor card. Uh, I did watch the Sky Nicholson uh, fight. Fell asleep all the way to the end of the Gary Cully fight. Uh, not, a, not a fan of him. But then I covered, obviously, the Katie Taylor main event. And then I watched the uh, Showtime prelims. You know, and now here we are. The next fight is going to be uh, Sabriel Matias versus Ar 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 Argashev. I keep butchering his name. And then you're going to have Jamel, Jamal Charles, excuse me, versus Jose Benavidez. Ooh, that was my nipples hard. Um, and the main event, of course, David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andre or Andrade. Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. I'm T Street Controversy with Fight View 360. And also down below in the description box, follow me on Twitter at T Street Controversy.